Okay, welcome to episode 6 of our Kerbal Space Program career mode tutorial. This video is going to be pretty weird because I recorded a whole lot of footage, about 20 minutes worth, and I didn't realize my microphone was muted. But we're going we're gonna to move on. You can notice here that, isn't this gorgeous? That's because we had some mods. Uh, this The visuals are from the Scatterer mod. We have Ragged Science X, which will let us keep track of our science. So here we have all the science that we can potentially research right here. Listen to that. We have, um, coming up soon, a list of all the science in the game, period, that we could probably go through. Fantastic. Uh, nothing here because we are not on a vessel. This is a science available to the vessel right now. And this is just science available at this moment. Cool. So we have installed the ScanSat mod, which lets us uh, scan the planet, which is what we're going to do. And now we're going to accept the mission. We have a mission here. These new missions are from ScanSat. And what we're going to do is that we're going to do a low resolution scan of Kerbin. It's exciting. Uh, the goal here is to, to, to get 85%, which is seems like we can do it, right? I could spoil this for you right now, but then you won't watch the rest of this video. I have no idea what's going on right here. There are like five people are going to watch this anyway, so let's have fun. You know, I'd normally tell you to like, subscribe at this point, but whatever. Um, I think it's more important that I just get out and get content. And you know what? I, you know, I've been very formal in the videos past. I'm just going to be weird. We're grabbing the Probodyne, blah, 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 Stay put, Nick. Um, we can see here that it's a lot lighter than the command pod we used in the past. And it means it's going to be a lot easier for us uh, to get into space. So we're going to throw an antenna on there because we need to communicate with the planet. Let's get that on the right straight. That's what I'm doing. That's, that's what I'm telling myself I'm doing. Um, and we're going to add some more parts. This is so awkward, guys. And gals. Oh, what are we? Oh, yes. Inline reaction wheel. That helps us move things. Uh, we generally have trouble moving things on our own uh, without any kind of control surface. Control surfaces don't work in space because there's no atmosphere. The regular pod has uh, ability to do this. This pro pod doesn't, so we got to add our own. Uh, next, we're going to throw a control bag. And what we're going to put in this control bag is the mech jab control unit, so we get all the information we need. And next, we are going to put in an absolute fuck ton of batteries so many batteries the reason why we haven't researched solar panels yet so the only electricity we have in space is what we bring so that's a lot of batteries in there yeah and we're gonna have to research and get some solar panels that, to, to generate electricity because this is getting kind of ridiculous that's a lot of batteries put in there that's 16 batteries uh so this is the cool part we're going to put on the ScanSat altimetry, altimetry sensor. This here is part of the ScanSat mod. It lets us do that scanning of the planet that we saw before. That's really cool. This is actually going to cause us some problems as we uh, assemble the rest of our ship because it's on one side and it's going to, we don't have any kind of detachable fairing. So this is going to cause some problems for us in terms of, um, aerodynamics and so we're gonna have to build a lot of control surfaces into our aircraft uh, spacecraft sorry and we're also gonna you know lose some efficiency because of that it's gonna be tough it's gonna be a lot tougher to fly so let's put on a fuel tank yes and we're gonna select our most efficient engine the terrier it sips fuel but it's, uh, it doesn't provide that much thrust but it does sip fuel it is the well, they're better engines, but right now it is essentially the Prius of rocket engines. You can see right here it doesn't provide much thrust, but it also uses has a very low consumption of fuel, which is why it's going to be our final kind of our final stage. We're going to clearly put a stack decoupler there, and then we're going to put our main engine kind of boost, our main engine fuel system right here. So we're going to pick, we're going to do a doubling of this fuel because we'll need a lot of fuel. And we are going to pick an engine, just the Reliant. It's just got a lot of thrust that we'll need to make our, uh, to get us into orbit. And finally, we're going to do something crazy for our initial stage. 
we are gonna shovel a solid rocker booster on the end of it. Lots of power, lots of thrust, but no, not just one. Using the radial decoupler, we're gonna put four on here for a total of five. So we attach the one, then we're gonna to do some radial symmetry. Now we have five engines. We're gonna put some caps on them so they're a little more aerodynamic. And now we should be going after our control surfaces. We need as many control surfaces in order to make up for the fact that we don't have SAS. Yep, this probe, this probe head does not have SAS, uh, stability assistance. So, like, you know, essentially, we're gonna throw eight fins on here. We're gonna make it nice, and pretty though. And we're gonna lose some of our delta V with the weight, but we are over-engineering this so that we have as much power as possible. And now the next thing that we're going to do uh, is that we are going to kind of throttle down how much power uh, the engines are. And the reason for that is that at low altitudes, we're fighting wind resistance to get in space. So what we can do is that when we lower the amount of power, we kind of throttle that power back. Our engines last longer. We're not wasting so much energy on you know, fighting the wind to get up. And when we get in space, we don't care about that much because we have no wind resistance. This, the way this stage is built, this rocket's built, is that um, the solid rocket booster should be able to just kind of shoot us up in the air and to a good point, we use our main engine and our little engine after that. Our main engine to kind of make sure we get to orbit and a little engine to, to kind of do uh, adjustments to our trajectory. Um, the problem with this setup is that I don't ha uh, it's very difficult to control. So, uh, whereas I normally make a turn at about, um, what, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? About 10,000 meters above, start turning, start building that lateral velocity. I am essentially going to go straight up and make a right turn. Um, not efficient, but it's just easier to fly that way. And as you get better and get more things, this, this will be just better to manage overall. I think for you anyway. And we lift off. And in a little bit, you're going to see that I'm going to a little bit from that air resistance, that uneven air resistance with that scan set. Uh, what I've done with the smart ass is I've killed rotation. Uh, this is a nice little computerized function, which, which just helps me deal with the, 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 the shimming and motion of so far, things look good. We're about um, a little under half of the burn of the solid rocket boosters. Uh, we can see the white, the white clouds that are showing some of the in the air. It's a little bit. It's kind of uh, getting worse and being a little heat from the friction. We can see our fuel about halfway there. No, uh, we're about halfway. Our apoapsis is climbing rapidly. Soon we're gonna lose uh, our SRBs. We're gonna cut out for lack of fuel being empty. We're gonna separate and activate our main engine. Just in them. Uh, we don't actually have to activate our engine right now because we are at 100. Our apoapsis is 107 kilometers, which is fantastic. And we're gonna start just pointing the rocket in the direction we want to go. I'm gonna activate the rocket manually by right-clicking on it. And we're going to wait a little bit. I'm going to thrust a little bit here to kind of point us in the right direction. And we wait. So we're hitting M to access the map. We see our rotation, it's uh, our, our kind of like trajectory, and we see it's really, really narrow. So what we're going to do is that when we get to the apoapsis, we're going to start burning, or right before it, we're going to start burning in order to increase our lateral, our ground velocity. So we're traveling so fast that the curvature of the Earth causes us to fall uh, faster uh, to pretty much go as fast as the, the Earth is falling away from us. And we're going to activate surface info to get some more information. 
and all these things pop up because the mech shop window is right over the fuel window. I don't know how to turn that off, but I figured it out. You can see all the, because I've got the electric charge checkbox checked, everything related to electrical charge comes up. We're 30 seconds out from apoapsis. I'm going to start the burn on our main engine. And what I'm doing here is I'm pointing the spacecraft so that I'm not losing vertical speed. I'm still kind of gaining altitude. And it's a balance. I want to not lose vertical speed, but I also kind of want to increase lateral velocity as much as I can in order to reduce my periapsis. So you see the periapsis and orbit info window is starting to shrink, and that's fine. And this is definitely one place I could have been a lot more uh, efficient. I did not keep, keep my vertical speed at around 345 meters per second. I could have cut that down and made my uh, angle of my, my could have pointed my rocket a little further down. I ran out of fuel in my main engine, so I'm going to use my thruster, my small engine left, and that's fine. Pulling ourselves down. The one downside to this is that when I'm all said and done, I am ending up with a very erratic uh, limit. And as we can see, when my periapsis, my lowest point, reaches that sort of 100,000 kilometer mark that I want. I'm not 100,000 kilometer, 100 kilometer mark. My apoapsis is around 456 kilometers. Uh, 456,000 kilometers, which is a lot. And you can see here that my orbit is, uh, you saw there that my orbit was very uh, erratic. So now I'm going to activate the scan sat. I'm going to right click on it, start the scan. You see it deploying. Uh, I'm going to yaw right here to point at the planet. No reason it works without, I just liked how that looked. And we can see here on our map, planetary mapping page that we are mapping the, the equatorish areas of the planet. And we see the planet moving across the big map. And at this point, I'm wondering why is the map not updating? Well, one, I need to convert it to where it sees altimetry. And I'm like, well, where's the thing? I've done that, but why aren't I mapping? And this is where I come to the realization that I am too far from the planet to map it properly. So I'm going to line myself up to the periapsis point. And I'm going to do a burn in the retrograde direction. So the thing is that to change your apoapsis, you need to make a maneuver at the periapsis and vice versa. If I want to bring down my apoapsis down to a reasonable amount, at the point where I hit periapsis, I need to face away from my, the direction of my velocity, my direction of, you know, my forward direction. And I need to face away from it and do a burn. So you do that by using MechJab, clicking on retrograde, it'll automatically orient my spacecraft in the right direction. And I've got about six minutes to periapsis. And when I get that, I'm gonna start a burn to slow myself down. And when I do that, I'm going to bring down my apoapsis dramatically. And it doesn't take, surprisingly, it doesn't take much fuel in order to do this kind of thing. Um, it take you know the hard part about this is that getting into orbit takes so much fuel once we're actually in orbit away from that the, the maneuver changes we make uh to just kind of change our apoapsis and our periapsis are really surprisingly minor like right now i was just sipping the fuel and now i got decided i was gonna get tired so like what was that a three second maximum burn not even three seconds and i've got about two thousand you know, delta V left. And we can see here in this map, that I've, I've circulized my orbit pretty good. And now I'm gonna look at this, I'm like, well, why isn't it scanning? I'm in range, weird. And here's the gotcha. With this large map, it doesn't refresh automatically. You gotta hit the refresh button. I'm gonna do that in a second. Come on, figure it out, dude. <laughs> It's funny watching myself. Oh, am I figuring it out? Am I figuring it out? I'm checking to see if the scan sat's working properly. Yeah, it is. It is. 
Scan that to the ideal. Why isn't it working? Because you haven't hit the refresh button. There you go. And you can see that I've scanned a good amount of Kerbin. So now, we're in this kind of inclination, we're never going to be able to scan the entire planet, right? It's it's we're only going to get the middle part so what we have to do is that we need to burn in a certain direction and what we have to do is we have to point ourselves normal plus or normal minus normal plus or normal minus means that you're going to take the um the kind of direction you're going to and you're going to turn 90 degrees to it right now our inclination where is it is five points about five degrees and we're going to point ourselves perpendicular and we're going to burn and we started the burn here. And the question is, is we're gonna have enough fuel to burn. The problem is, is I've got plenty of fuel. And as I burn, I also generate some electricity, but not as much electricity as the scanner is using. This is the tricky part. So I'm gonna turn on full burn. I notice I'm still using electricity. So two questions, am I going to be able to get myself into a polar orbit, uh, a polar orbit being one where I cross the poles, because that's to, in order to scan the entirety of the planet, you need to be in a polar orbit. Uh, that's question one. Two, I'm looking at my electricity with 314 electricity left out of 1615. I am not going to have enough electricity to scan the planet. So right now, this becomes an exercise of how much can I scan. Now that our inclination is around 30 degrees, it does not look good for our hometown heroes, especially since I'm learning and running out of fuel. I want to be at an inclination you're looking for is 90 degrees. And with fuel running out, I'm not going to make it. But we're going to see how much we can get. Well, it looks like about 49 degrees of inclination, and we can see that we are scanning more of the planet. We're, getting, we're kind of getting away from that strange, strange uh, kind of pattern of just mapping the belts. And let's see how far we get before our electric charge runs out. Yeah, we're not going to get much. We're, uh, we're at 15, 16%. Maybe we'll hit 20 before we run out of electricity. I doubt we'll hit that. But that just shows you that we can't realistically pack enough batteries on this to scan the entire planet. So we really need to work towards um, solar panels. Um, that's going to cost us 90 science. We have 10 science in the bank. So our next episodes, we're going to be all about science. And what we're going to do is that going forward, uh, we're not going to name these episodes after whatchamacallit, right? after uh, historical missions. Um, that's not really all that fun. Um, we're going to call the episodes what we're doing in the episodes. I think that's going to be a lot more helpful to people. We're just going to relax. We're going to hang out. Um, the first couple episodes were really kind of formal, and I don't know if that's something I want to keep doing. Um, I enjoy just playing this game and talking to it talking like I am to you, and I hope you enjoy that too. And to be honest, no one's freaking watching this. At the time of this recording, I'm getting like, I've got like 40 views total. And everyone says, you know, well, not everyone says, but like, consistency is key. And if you like the formal, it's more good for you, but like, honestly, about 10 people are going to watch this. And I'd rather just have fun while making these videos. If I'm not having fun, what the hell's the point of this at all? <laughs> but look at me. I'm like, freaking this out like, ah, oh, stupid. You've got this satellite in orbit, you get the scan thing on it, you have no power to it, you've only scanned like 20% of the stupid planet, and now you have to go find some science. And, you know, thankfully we did research more science, we're going to get some more tools to help us with the sciencing. Uh, and that's what the focus of the next episode is going to be. We're going to get some more science. And uh, hopefully, the goal is to get 90 science, so we get some solar panels, so we can do a polar orbiting satellite for reals, and it'll be awesome. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. I do appreciate those of you watching. I know I, I kind of joke about no one watching, but those of you who do, I do appreciate it. And uh, happy flying. We'll see you next time.